Well, uh, hello. <laughs> hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> so I got uh, Cody BB on uh, the Black Spindle podcast with uh, David and I both here. And uh, so <laughs> I just, like, just got home, so this is a, uh, like, kind of been rushing around. So I, I had a few uh, questions that I prepared for you. Cool, go ahead. Uh, first one I wrote down is, have you always wanted to be a musician? Yeah, I, uh, I started playing music when I was four years old. My uncle uh, lived in Nashville at that time, and he bought me a guitar and brought it home for me, and then I started writing all these really cheesy, you know, four-year-old songs and <laughs> recording them on little tapes, and then uh, I just always uh, looked up to him and wanted to be on the radio, and then over the course of time throughout high school and stuff i i didn't middle school i played sports and everything and then in high school i started playing guitar again and then i went to washington state university and started playing in bands and everything there i knew i wanted to have a, a fallback plan so i got an engineering degree but um in the midst of all of that i started a band in college and then kind of just followed that dream and I knew that I would kind of regret it if I didn't actually push on that dream. So when I moved to Seattle after I got out of college, I was thinking, well, I could at least take a little bit of time, focus on music, see what happens. And uh, luckily, the economy crashed. <laughs> well, not luckily, but the economy crashed at that point, and all the engineering jobs were kind of gone. So I ended up, it kind of forced me into pushing to try to make music work and met a good group of guys and um, that all had the same goals. and. All we really wanted to do was travel and meet people and play music for a living. So um, that's kind of how it all happened. And now, you know, because of that, now I, I'm able to do different things creatively to make a living, not just music, but things that are related to music or, or production in one way or another, um, whether it's live events or videos or whatever. So um, life's, a, life's full of opportunities, and it's just about kind of putting yourself in front of those opportunities and then seeing what happens. So, right. That's really cool. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. That also answers my second question, which was, what did you do out of high school? <laughs> yeah, and, I, uh, to elaborate a little bit, I um, I worked really hard in high school. I, I didn't know if I'd be able to pay for college, mm -hmm. um, so I, I was a valedictorian at SELA, and then I got oh, a, wow. a full-ride scholarship to Washington State. So when I went there, I knew I had to work really hard, but I was also caught up in you know being a college student and started a couple bands and and we had a great time and it took me five years to get through engineering school because it's pretty demanding but um mm -hmm. you know i learned a lot through that whole process and even though i don't use my i'm not an engineer at this point i use that degree every single day as far as project management and just people people skills and business skills and all the things that i learned kind of uh going through just being a college student and learning about life through through that lens you know so um yeah right cool uh what other things did you enjoy doing as a kid uh i, I loved sports i love the outdoors uh, i played soccer basketball baseball and then um as i got older like seventh grade i was on the a team of basketball eighth grade i was on the b team ninth grade i was on the c team and it turns out there is not a d team so <laughs> i was like well probably maybe play the guitar or something so i started playing guitar uh more to focus on that um but i love camping and and really we started chinook fest in 2012 and that that came from just you know my love for the outdoors my band's love for the outdoors when we were on the road uh if we were on tour we'd bring all of our camping stuff with us so we'd be in like texas and we were all pretty broke so between shows we'd go and camp at whatever national parks were around and um, I just have always loved that fishing and hunting, uh, that, that lifestyle. So, um, that's why I actually moved back to the area so that I could, um, have a little bit more of that. So. Right. Cool. Uh, what inspired you to start up Chinook Fest? Uh, Chinook Fest was kind of, um, it was a mix of things, but there were some guys, uh, in a band called Flow Motion and they started a, a festival called Summer Meltdown, and it's in Darrington, Washington. And um, they were buddies of mine. We played with them, and 
I had seen what they had done and I heard about the festival and then we played the festival and I was like, man, this is amazing that they were able to take their fan base in their local area and turn that into something that actually really mattered. And so my band, we were out on the road and we had played this private party for some friends of ours up on Chinook Pass and like six months later we were coming back from our tour and they were like, hey, you know, you, you guys should uh, come and play at this other party and then we started talking about it and we were thinking, well, why don't we throw the party and why don't we just kind of do, you know, take a page out of, out of our friends' books and, and say, okay, well, we could probably put on this little festival and probably get people to pay to come and watch it, you know? And so really it was, it was the idea of our fans to be really honest. Um, and we just kind of took it and ran with it. Uh, that first year was a stretch. We didn't really set our sights on the goal until May of that year. And then we found a venue, we built a website, and we put out all the tickets, we booked all the bands, we worked with the county, I mean, all of that between May and when the September festival rolled around. So it was a huge, huge learning curve uh, with very little time to be prepared. So then over the last uh, seven or eight years, this is year eight, actually, um, it's just grown each year and we've learned along the way and we've dealt with the issues as they come. and. Um, kind of, you know, just made it happen. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what were your favorite high school classes? Favorite high school classes. I really. Uh, gosh, favorite classes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I liked math. I guess I liked <laughs> English. Um, Gosh, I like math. I like English. I like, I really, like, my favorite thing to study is history. Mm. But being in, uh, kind of trying to gear up to be an engineer, I really tried to focus on the math and science right. side. But uh, if I could choose, I, I love history. I love uh, geography and kind of learning about the world and the people of the world. So that's, uh, those are my favorite topics. But the other ones just seem to make more sense for what my goals were. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, what are your plans for the future? For the future, um, well, I'm I've really been focusing a lot of my time on uh, building this other business um, called Digital Vendetta Productions, and hmm. a bass player um, is an insanely talented dude, and he. When he joined the band, he was working for the Seattle Sounders and the Seahawks doing video production. So we, over the last couple, well, five or six years, we've built this business based on his talents, really. Um, and I just, he moved to Yakima at the same time I moved home. And um, I had a network of uh, people that I could kind of, you know, I knew that there was a need out there for digital media content. And the way that the world is moving and everything is going online and everybody's telling their stories through video. And, um, so we just started kind of piecing together, you know, this partial plan, I guess, to put together a little business and then it kind of took off. And now we have some amazing clients, mainly in the Yakima Valley and central Washington, but, um, all over the Northwest really. And, uh, we're building a team and we have over, I think like over 70 clients now that we've worked for and just really trying to help them tell their stories and helping them get their message out there is, is our main focus and for me it's really exciting because I, I can kind of build Chinook Fest as we go and that still works and I'm still touring here and there whenever we can. Uh, we're touring a lot with our buddy Austin Jenks um, and then in addition to that we can build this other company that's kind of like my day to day but it still allows us that artistic outlet and it still allows us to you know, be creative and, and produce these things that aren't just for ourselves anymore. Like music used to be, you know, it's, it's for, it's for these clients. It's really to try to help them help themselves. You know? So, um, I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, that's, that's my main, my main push right now. Huh. All right. Uh, what is the weirdest gig you've played? The weirdest gig you've played. I played, I, <laughs> I don't know if I should talk about this, um, <laughs> this is what came to mind, I played a, uh, me and my old hand drummer Joe Catron, who also went to Sela, um, 
we got hired by this lady to come and play a private house party, and that's a pretty normal thing these days. So we go to play the house party, and she's super nice. Her boyfriend's really nice. But then it just kind of turned out, I think it might have been some sort of like an adult swingers party of some sort. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. <laughs> so uh, we, got, we, we just played the show, and we got out of there. <laughs> but, uh, we played some weird shows, man. We, we used to play a lot of fairs because the fairs actually had decent budgets and we would go and play fairs from here all the way to arizona and back each year and this one fair we play in yuma arizona had a uh what is it oh a hypnotist right before us and then this monkey show right after us and so we'd literally be sandwiched between these two things and like <laughs> the crowd would just be packed for the hypnotist because everybody wants to be hypnotized and then they would, like, clear out and go see the rest of the fair. We'd play to basically nobody. And then uh, then the monkey show would start right after us, so all these people would come back to watch the monkey show, but <laughs> it wasn't very good for us. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, how far have you traveled for a show? Uh, we've played in 30 of the United States, and we've played in seven European countries, so... I think the furthest European country would be like Germany or Switzerland. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's. What were you gonna say? Oh, that being over being overseas and playing for for uh, European people, man, that was like a dream come true. Obviously, just because we got to travel and that was our main goal in the first place. But people in different countries really react to music differently than the people in America. Huh. Not necessarily better or worse but just different huh All it's right. cool to see that. okay do you ever get tired of playing one genre too much i uh, kind of yeah i mean that's why um i started another side project called rust on the rails with my buddy blake uh and we did that for the last couple of years and now i'm back to playing with the crooks again so it's kind of a mix of even with my band, um, I think from the outside looking in, you might just be able to call it like country or rock or whatever, but we really play a lot of different styles within that, um, and that keeps it exciting for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually I've been working with a producer in Nashville right now uh, on a couple songs that we wrote uh, last year that will be like really, they're basically pop tracks. So... Um, and then one really cool aspect of the video company and the media company that we have is that myself and Blake Noble, uh, we work to, mainly Blake, but I, I help kind of compose these pieces for that are used for video projects. So we're, our, our company is really able to do all things in, internally. So when a, com a company comes to us, we could go online and just pick out a song and put it on the video, but it's a lot more... It strengthens their brand if they have their own sound. And so if we know that, like, if we're doing something for a hop company or something, and we know that it's, like, a really gritty kind of, you know, salt of the earth, farm worker, you know, down and dirty kind of company, that is going to sound differently in their branding than something like a, like what we would do for a hospital or something. So it's really fun to be able to put together the music that goes along with those video projects and kind of give them not only here's the video but here's your entire brand like this is what you look like sound like everything about this is your brand you know right so blake does most of it and i just kind of help um get the help put it together but it's anything from pop music to symphonic stuff i mean it's it's all over the place so yeah okay um what other kinds of music do you like like do you like any weird kinds of music or you know, right now I'm actually really into, um, really like Billie Eilish, mm. uh, and I don't know, my girlfriend listens to a bunch of different stuff that she's been introducing me to, but I really like that. I mean, I like some EDM music, I, I like uh, different aspects of hip-hop music, um, really like pop music, I like music that crosses genres. Uh, uh -huh. I'm not one of the people that like, I like old school country and I like country music that like really goes back to the roots but i'm not one of the people that gets all mad because oh they're ruining country or they're doing this it's like no nah, i mean whatever is true to somebody if it's music it's music you know and right. hate on stuff as much as you want but it doesn't really get anywhere uh-huh 
Yeah, I really appreciate that point of view because so many people get really heated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that all the time, man. I've got these two songs that are going to come out this next year, and I'm, I think that certain people will really like it, and some people will be like, man, he's changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, man, well, maybe I have, but if you don't change, what are you doing? Right, you know? yeah. So I, uh, I try not to get too bent out of shape about it. All right. Uh, what different jobs did you have while you were like, like in high school or even in, like in college while you were doing your music? Um, you know, I in high school I used to work with my dad, and we had this recycling company. Um, so I worked with him, just picking up recyclables each day, um, early, early in the morning, and then. When I got through high school, went to college, because I was on a full ride scholarship there, I was very, very, very fortunate to, they were paying for everything, and so I had to keep my grades up, right. and I was really fortunate that they actually paid me enough money to study and everything that I didn't have to get a job, which was amazing. Uh-huh. Um, and then during the summertime, I worked for Yakima County as an engineer intern, and then the next year I worked for... Um, I worked for the State Department of Transportation as an engineering intern. And then when I got out, I went to Seattle and uh, I was trying to figure out, okay, you know, okay, I could play these gigs here and there and make a little bit of money, but I needed something else too. And so I got a real estate license and I became a real estate uh, hmm. agent just for a little bit. And wow. then after that, I just went full time on the road. And then after that, it's just really been whatever income I have is generated from stuff that we produce, whether it's videos, music, festivals, whatever it is. It's like, it's just a constant hustle and a constant grind. Right. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So far, so good. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I think that that pretty much covers it for my prepared questions. Is there anything else you want to say? No, man, I, I appreciate your perspective, and I, uh, I appreciate you reaching out, and I think, um, you know, if there's anything else that you need, uh, the fact that you're going to Washington State University and going to probably live in Stevenson is definitely right in line with what I did, and although I didn't study music there, music was a huge part of what I did when I was in Pullman, so uh, if you have any questions at all, in fact, my piano player in my band is a, um, he was a music major there. Uh, at WSU as well so um, if you have any questions at all man reach out and I'm happy to help and it'd be great to meet you right yeah that'd be sweet cool well uh, take care man and um, yeah again let me know if you need anything and uh, we'll go from there Mm -hmm. well thank you yeah no problem man have a good one you too all right see ya see ya Well, uh, thank you to Cody Beebe for joining us at this podcast, and uh, uh, that'll be it.